So today I wanted to talk about book auctions. Uh, now this is not meant to be a video if you have a rare book, whether you should auction it or offer it to a dealer privately. Uh, that type of video feels a little bit self-serving. Uh, of course, as a book dealer, uh, we want you, instead of going to auction, uh, you know, to offer us things privately. Uh, so, uh, like the song goes, you know, uh, call me maybe. Um, this is more for a uh, beginning book dealer or a collector about how to start uh, looking through lots on some of the innumerable auctions that are online and the unbelievable number of books that are constantly being offered. It can be quite uh, overwhelming. Uh, and it's typical of what a, a rare book dealer does on an almost daily basis. Uh, so if you want to be a dealer, this is sort of what your life uh, is like. Um, a number of years ago, they had that uh, Pixar film Inside Out, where they're those cute little cartoon characters uh, debating people's innermost thoughts in their minds. Uh, that is sort of what uh, going through a book auction catalog for the first time is like uh, for me. You have these little voices and one says, be brave, that's an amazing lot, bid on that. And the other voice is, are you crazy? Don't overbid, don't overbid. And they debate it and battle it out in your mind uh, before you actually place uh, a bid. Uh, where'd you go to find out what book auctions are coming up? Well, there's a a great site on Rare Book Hub. They have a very organized book calendar and I'll put the link uh, below uh, and that's well worth browsing through. Uh, but believe me, once you start finding uh, them, uh, it's a little bit like Ghostbusters. They quickly find you and you'll be deluged in emails about forthcoming sales before you know it. Uh, a couple of years ago, when I was appraising uh, at the New York uh, Antiquarian Book Fair for their appraisal day, I sat next to my colleague uh, uh, Sunday from B&B &B Rare Books, and they did an article on her entitled something like, How to Appraise a Rare Book in 30 Seconds. Uh, that sounds impossible to do, but believe me, you can get a sense of a value fairly immediately. Uh, and that's sort of what going through a rare book auction catalog is like for the first time, except instead of appraising one book uh, in 30 seconds, you have to quickly, at least on a cursory level, appraise 100 or 200 books uh, in 30 seconds each uh, so that you can, you know, highlight or flag uh, which books are of interest to you for additional uh, investigation. So uh, let's go look at a typical forthcoming online book auction uh, and here some of my Pixar like uh, you know uh, innermost thoughts about uh, what uh, lots are of interest a bit on. So now I am sitting down and looking at an auction. This auction is hosted by Doyle's in New York. Uh, it's coming up on April 29th. So today is April 27th so I've got two more days. Uh, and I like to procrastinate right to the end, like most people. And this is typical of one of the many uh, auctions online that I am bombarded with as a rare book dealer. So I have to go through them in a very cursory fashion, lot by lot, very quickly, and write down what sparks my interest, uh, what's worthy of additional investigation so I can make uh, an appropriate bid. Uh, as I do this, I like to also keep in mind who am I bidding against because it's so easy these days to get into a bidding war and overpay, especially with the 25-27% buyer's premium that's added. Uh, that is often a difficult hurdle to get back when you are reselling uh, the book. Uh, and I could be bidding against a knowledgeable client. I could be uh, a knowledgeable uh, colleague, I should say, a book dealer, which is certainly fine. It could be bidding against uh, an end client, whether it's a collector or a university that the auction house themselves has alerted to an upcoming lot. Uh, those are often not good bidding wars because by the very nature, an end client is going to pay a top price for something they want. Uh, and these days especially, I can be uh, bidding against people who, let's say, euphemistically uh, are a little... Uh, but unhappy because of the liquidity in financial markets and being bored at home during the pandemic. 
uh, and they can place uh, what I should say are uh, less than well considered bids. So I don't want to say ignorant bids, but let's just say less than well considered bids. So I have to be wary of that a little bit. Uh, now, I said I will give you some of my inner thoughts as I race through this, you know, Pixar style with those little voices in my head that say, bid on this or don't bid on that. Uh, and, you know, it's a little bit fast paced, like the movie Fast and Furious, except without, of course, the beautiful people and great cars. Uh, it's a little bit like the uh, ending soliloquy, I guess, of Ulysses' dream of consciousness. You know, my heart was going like mad. And yes, I said, bid. Yes, I will bid. Uh, so let's start by looking through the lots here. Um, the first lot here, Joe Frazier and Muhammad Ali. That is a rare stadium poster. Um, you know, uh, dance like a butterfly, bid like a bee. I don't go in for boxing stuff, uh, but uh, it is a good metaphor to start the auction. Uh, every auction these days is indeed like a boxing match. And if you really want something, you've got to deliver an appropriate uh, knockout punch there. Uh, Americana, Samoban, probably not for me, American Revolution, Journals of Congress, that's probably a Robert Aiken printing. I do like Robert Aiken, the first printer of the Bible of the Revolution. Uh, let's see here, why is that so cheap, $800 to $1,200? Ah, because it is first edition of Volume 1 only, but incomplete. And the voices are saying, stay away! And I always stay away now from a lot of incomplete books. I just cannot sell them. Uh, baseball, 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 not for me. Broadside, uh oh, I hear some fireworks in my head. <laughs> Last life words, dying confession, Rachel Wall, William Smith. What is it? Uh, it's Rachel Wall, who is Rachel Wall? So one of the interesting things about going through auction catalogs are how much you learn. You can't possibly know everything in the field. So just by reading catalogs, you often learn a lot. Scarce broadside printing of the dying confession of Rachel Wall, the last woman executed by hanging in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, also considered the firstborn woman to become a pirate. So that hits all the bells and whistles. We have a woman born pirate, we have an execution uh, and a attractive broadside with a woodcut uh, of hangings there. So all of the tongues of those voices are hanging out now in my brain. Uh, and it says the broadside is scarce. We trace no copies at auction and few held institutionally. I don't know what few means exactly. I, uh, while Doyle's is a very uh, straightforward and accurate auction house, I do like to check uh, the rarity of the items offered at any auction that I'm bidding on just to make sure that it's a little more than marketing language. They already have a bid here of twenty-seven fifty, six bids. Asking bid is three thousand dollars. Next, uh, that is expensive, but certainly could be worth it. A very interesting and visually appealing uh, broadside there. I will come back to that Civil War stuff. I don't do too well with uh, Philip Sheridan. Uh, at least he fought for the Union. Uh, he pushed Lee to Appomattox. Uh, and for that important event in American history, he's being bid at only $175, but not for me. William Cobbett, uh, the uh, English pamphleteer, that's important for economic and social history. Uh, but uh, I don't have clients for William Cobbett. It's a little bit of old school English taste. And while I personally like old school English taste, I can't buy what I can't sell easily these days. Americana, color playbook, now those are two keywords and those voices have their binoculars on in my mind. Uh, that's going to elicit a response from a lot of book dealers. Uh, Timber Merchant's Guide, so that's a very cool utilitarian work and very unusual uh, illustrations there. Uh, what are those? It says, a rare and desirable work on several fronts. This is the second book printed in the United States to utilize lithography in its illustrations. So that's very interesting. Not only is it an important book um, uh, for the uh, uh, for timber and stuff, but uh, you know, certainly a very important book in uh, uh, printing history in America. And uh, stumbling here a little bit because I'm reading as I'm talking. There's a large copy of a genuinely rare little book uh, in a period binding, so it's in its uh, early uh, or near contemporary binding, which is already good. 
and it's, it says it's a large copy, so I'd have to check the auction records on that. They have a reasonable estimate, $1,500, $2,500. I don't know how accurate already has nine bids there. Very interesting book. I will come back to that. Eisenhower, Eisenhower, pass forward, Kissinger, kiss them goodbye. Ugh, the voices are putting uh, their hands over their eyes for a bad pun there. Abraham Lincoln, I like for a commission sign. Uh, the voice is saying already at $5,000, I am out. Uh, Lincoln, uh, Lindbergh, blah. There's so many interesting things that would appeal to a lot of people, and I'm breezing through them. That does not mean they are not worthy lots to bid on, just don't have uh, clients or personal interest in them. Uh, usually I don't go for maps, but here is a fabulous map. Ratzner, the plan of the city of New York, that is a very famous map, uh, but... Uh, 1776, one of the great maps, it says here, newly discovered Ratzner map discovered in Brooklyn shop, shop 50 years ago. I always tell people all the greatest treasures of the world are discovered under mattresses in Brooklyn. Uh, so that is a fabulous map. It is indeed one of the most beautiful, important, and accurate plans of New York, as described by the famous reference work in Stokes. Uh, but look at that estimate, forty to $60,000, and all the voices are saying, stay away, and I will stay away, because for something out of my specialist field, I'm not going to pay that type of money. Uh, New York uh, topography and hydrology, that is a visually appealing map. I do like unusual maps, especially ones that have to do with urban planning or engineering or not your typical map here. Uh, showing the water courses in New York, $2,500 to $3,500. That is a beautiful map. I will flag that and come back after some research. Laws of the City of New York. I've had that too many times. Those voices are yawning, not because it's a good book, just because I'm too familiar with it. Iconography of Manhattan Island. Oh, those little characters are now uh, going down to my back and begging me not to buy a book, a set like that. That is a heavy set, and I'm trying to stay away from heavy sets lately. Nix, nix, nix. Uh, I will nix those lots. I don't care about the voices uh, saying my puns are awful. Uh, Thomas Paine. I like Thomas Paine, but that is not an important edition of the works. have to buy... Uh, First editions are important editions because the mid-market antiquarian or lower-end market is not doing uh, particularly well here. Again, I'm talking very fast as I breeze through these because this is honestly the way I'm thinking as I'm looking through an auction. Uh, and uh, you know, if you're a beginning book dealer, you'll get used to it. You have to look at a lot of lots all the time. Uh, oh, we are one-third the way through, and we move on to the second third here. Noah Webster, the great uh, dictionary writer and linguist, and you would expect that in oh, with the Ex Libris of William Sapphire, because some of these books come from William Sapphire's collection uh, since he passed, uh, the linguist and columnist, uh, Adams, Charles Adams, autographs. <gasps> I hear a celebration. Candles are coming out on a cake. 19th century autograph album. I love these. Uh, and uh, they can often be uh, fascinating collections. They just appeal to me how interesting they are. Uh, and they, you can make discoveries because they're often a melange of different documents. And because of that, uh, important things can slip in. Uh, the problem with them is, over the past 50 years, many of the important autographs, if you find a Darwin or a Dickens or something that has monetary value, have often been excised or taken out of the albums, and you're just left with the little stubs. So you do have to see what is indeed left. Here we have some royalty, George III and George IV. Hannah Moore, always in almost every album I see. Henry Longfellow, and probably the best thing here, a cut signature of Linnaeus, if you like taxonomy. Uh, I like bidding at these type of things, but I hear those voices, no, 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 don't bid. Again, I'd probably not be able to sell that, but I do find them fascinating. Ooh, some Chinese characters. Uh, Cecil Beaton, uh, the uh, uh, fashion uh, uh, icon and photographer here. Uh, let's see what that is. That looks fabulous. Travel permit and safe conduct issued to Cecil Beaton by the Kuomintang, the Chinese Nationalist Party. Uh, oh, in my head, they're bringing out the dragons and celebrating right now. This looks really interesting. Uh, Beaton worked for the British Ministry of Information as a war photographer from 1941 to 44. He visited the Far East on assignment, a harrowing trip. 
in which he narrowly escaped death, death, twice in accidents. They think repeated by accident uh, the word death here twice, but it does have that nice effect subliminally to underscore how perilous the assignment was and make me want this lot even more. So congratulations on that typo. Only four to six hundred dollars uh, and they are bidding 425 so far. So that's very reasonable. I'm going to flag that and come back to it. Uh, let's see what here. More Cecil Beaton material. Uh, probably not for me as it's not as visual as the first lot there. When I'm doing a fair, I'm looking for some nice visually appealing lots. Kuro, Cuba. You see, there's so many fascinating lots I'm skipping through just because they are either not in my specialty or just not focused on that area right now. Einstein, I adore Einstein. I've read innumerable biographies over the year. But I seldom bid on Einstein at public auctions because, again, this goes back to knowing who my competitors are, there are more specialized science dealers who, uh, I'm a generalist, and they're going to notice this lot, and if it's an important uh, letter, they're going to bid appropriately, and if I outbid them, I can assure you I'm probably paying too much, so I have to skip that. Napoleon the first here, uh, that looks like a secretarial letter, nicely signed. What's important is the content, a uh, letter signed by Napoleon. Uh, yes, it is a secretarial hand, signed Napoleon, and it comes together with Josephine. Ooh, another letter signed. So we got a duo there, Napoleon and Josephine. This letter from Napoleon, remember content is the most important thing in autographs. It's an exceptionally interesting one. Well, any auction house is going to say that. Let's see if it indeed is. Touching on the economics of warfare. So that is uh, unusual. Let's see what it breeze through here. Uh, competitive against the total return of the bit. Well, this has to do with the economic implications of warfare and budgets and uh, how inextricably they're tied. So that is an unusual letter there. We'll come back to that, study that more closely. It comes a nice presentation, Green Morocco. Everyone in my head loves that. Uh, look at that fine gilt binding with the arms there. Currently bid. $1,500. I'll have to come back to that. That is a potential interest. Uh, Orville Wright, I love that photograph, but uh, that estimate uh, again puts me out of the running because it's not my specialty. Uh, cook, cook, cook. Uh, far as zoology, I don't like to buy natural history and zoology at public auctions recently because I am bidding against my dear friend Dave Bergman. Uh, so I have to have some respect uh, for friends who are fellow dealers and stay away from some lots and just pray. Everyone's kneeling in prayer in my head now that he will return the favor and stay away from lots that I have potential interest in. Uh, an account of the islands, narrative adventure of the sufferings, uh, ethnography, Alkin. In the, what is that? I like Alkin. Henry Alkin often does some very interesting. Uh, uh, color plate books. Uh, look at that title. Gretna Green Bolta. The Gretna Green Bolta or Young Ladies Manuel. Some sort of pun in there, I guess. Oh, but it's only in the manner of Henry Alkin. That's speak for not really by Henry Alkin. Uh, let's look at the condition here. Ooh, and it got some rather ugly foxing on the plate. That probably makes it a no-go for me. Uh, dwarfs, I'd uh, probably rather eat a poison apple than buy animation art of a dwarf. Contemporary art, uh, skip that. Boswell, Brock, nope, not for me. Bridgman character, ooh, Chaucer, there we go. Single Eve, that has to be a Caxton. And uh, lo and behold, it is a Caxton. Uh, Westminster, 1483. Isn't it amazing that you can purchase a leaf uh, from one of the first English printers and from Chaucer, uh, no, no less? And what a reasonable estimate. That is 700 to 1,000. That's usually below what a Caxton leaf commands, but maybe because the edges are abraded here and in poor condition, so a modest leaf. But that's a lovely frame. Nice to have that on its wall. I wouldn't mind buying that for just decoration. Color plate books. Uh, Alistair Crowley. I don't know why I get spooked by Alistair Crowley. All those voices are hiding under beds in my cerebellum right now. Uh, Guy de Maupassant. Not for me. Oh, we move on to the final third. Here we go. Fine bindings. Additional fine bindings. Let's see what that is. It looks like watercolors. Uh, oh, sure enough. Here we go. Large original watercolors signed by various artists. That's interesting. 
the book sounds a little bit like a dull encyclopedia of uh, years past. Uh, Achievements of Civilization uh, by Bancroft. That's a classic work. Seven of a possible ten volumes. Uh, now everyone in my head looks a little bit puzzled. How is that? Do they only know it's possibly ten? Uh, what do they know? It's definitely ten. Uh, anyway, it says these are produced for the Colombian Exposition. So uh, exposition bindings is a very reasonable bid, five hundred dollars. I have to come back for that. That looks interesting. Forage paintings. I love the hidden mystery of forage paintings, but I don't display them well. French bindings here. Uh, these are manuscripts. Uh, this could be a lot of potential interest. Uh, quite charming manuscript, it says. Well, the description is a little bit uh, terse and uh, requires some very careful examination to see exactly what those are. I'll have to mark that and come back. Japanese design, passing by Joyce, Kant, uh, Kent. I like the I like how that sounds. Kant, Kent, uh, William Blackstone, commentaries on the uh, laws of England, one of the great sets. If you ever want to give a present to a lawyer, that is uh, the best gift you can uh, do. You can give him, uh, except perhaps for an unresolved ten million dollar uh, personal injury case. Uh, let's see here. George William, ooh, a manuscript, Requiem de Figure Concern la Guerre. That is a splendid binding. Oh my gosh. And it has to do with Chinese warfare, no less. A calligraphic manuscript written in French. That is some splendid book. Uh, with very finely drawn illustrations of Chinese armaments. Uh, oh, look how long that description is. A long description like that takes a lot of effort. It's often an indication that this book is going to do very well. And lo and behold, an incredibly low estimate. This is what we call a teaser estimate of one to $2,000. Uh, the voices in my head are laughing now at that. Uh, Sometimes auction houses can do that when they receive an estate and they don't have to accommodate the higher reserves of collectors or dealers consigning. Uh, but that book is going to do really well. That is the, uh, the best book in the uh, entire auction so far. But appropriately, it's already bid and the auction hasn't even started at $8,500 there. 15 bids. I'll have to mark that down. That may be worth serious consideration for a serious bid. Uh, maps, maps, maps again. Uh, not for me. Uh, oh, Winnie the Pooh can't go wrong, but uh, uh, I don't deal too much in uh, Winnie the Pooh and fine bindings. Although they make wonderful gifts. Oh, Tiffany, I love that famous cover. Uh, these books, and let's go. Oh, we're ending already. Oh, we're ending on uh, Watson, the Double Helix, uh, a great book that started the revolution of molecular biology here. Inscribed for Bill from Jim. I guess that's supposed to mean uh, James Watson inscribed. Uh, that seems like a low estimate for it, but that is a paperback edition in original wrappers. Gotcha. Probably not for me, uh, but it's a good book again uh, uh, to end the auction on uh, because uh, my mind is completely wound up now like a double helix. So. Doyle has done a fabulous job of starting and ending the auction on metaphors here. So I hope that was not too fast, but that is my honest first impressions and thoughts as I race through an auction and typical of how I go through an auction. I've marked down the lots that deserve some further investigation. I'm going to go back to the auction and make some well-considered bids and then proceed to the next auction on my list. Thank you so much again for watching and tune in for some more videos about uh, the tricks uh, and daily activities of the antiquarian book trade. Uh, and certainly if you have any questions about particular books or auctions or things you're interested in, feel free to reach out. All my contact information is below and I do try and uh, answer people. So love to hear from you. Thank you so much.